don't have a lot of space and think you can't have a food forest well i'm going to show you today in my mini food forest well it's fall and it's time for sharing and gifts so we're going to get an update on what's going on in the garden plus some things i gotta get <laughs> So you're probably noticing, yes, we've got a giant rack of bananas. Oh my word. So this is the grand name and it actually, for its first rack, it put out two racks. <laughs> so I've got a lot of bananas coming in, plus some of the bananas on the Dwarf Cabin dishes, which are all hiding. And this one I did not get to in time and it is totally rotting out. And that's the challenge. When you've got a lot of food coming in, even if it's in a small space, it can be pretty challenging. So I think it was not long after I did the video for the summer tour, link up above, is that this bunch just came in. And what I've done so far is I actually went and I harvested one hand. So you can see right there. And that one hand, well, it was eight pounds, just 15 bananas. These are very, very big bananas. I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet, but I'm really excited too, because they're still ripening up. What I'm going to try to do as long as possible is only harvest one hand at a time because there are a lot of bananas in each of these. Now let's check out our mulberry tree. So the mulberry, you know, it's supposed to be an ever-bearing mulberry, but it really wasn't producing throughout summer. But you can see we are starting to get mulberries again. But why? How? What happened? Why didn't I get any over the summer? Because really this is an ever-bearing mulberry. I was wondering, was it because it was too hot? Was there too much rain? Did it need a fertilizer? Did it need a something? And what I read was that it really just needed a really good prune. So you can see, I went and I actually pruned back a lot of the branches and very shortly after, new mulberries. Now these guys are pretty shrimpy and wimpy. That's okay, because I've got a lot coming in. Can you see them all? See if you can see them. Lots of little baby ones coming in all over here. So I'm expecting pounds and pounds. And now that I know that this won't really hurt the tree and actually helps it put energy into going and making mulberries, it's gonna get another prune. Now my other mulberry, I also did a prune on, so you can see I got some berries there. But the thing is, is it is getting way crowded. If you look, there's the Grand Name, there's a Dwarf Cavendish. And honestly, while this has put out some bananas, they're just not. Can you guys see that? Let's see if I can, think. nope, other way. They're just, it's not doing well. They are not happy. Yes, these are bananas. Yes, they are edible, but they're just not, they're not doing well. Here's the other bunch. I mean, they're just, they're rotting on the tree. I think it's because they're just too crowded. It's just, it's not going well. So I'm gonna actually end up taking out this fall, this dwarf cavendish. It's gonna just have to go. 
And that'll open up a bunch of space for this mulberry. I probably will still keep this one for now, but it's unnoticed. So let's move over to the lower side. Now I haven't done a ton of work over here. I did get beans in, lots of different types of beans. Um, similar beans that I put in my vegetable garden and I'm letting them go up these trellises. And I wanted to do something different because well, the reality is, is that I have done tomatoes over here a few times and I wanted to mix it up. So I've got my nitrogen fixer. Ooh, look, teeny tiny, teeny tiny, tiny baby, bitty baby. Oh my goodness, look at my beans. I've got little babies coming in. So I've got little flowers starting to come in. This is exciting. There's one lone basil back there. And so all along here, so they've got all this trellis space, so they're nice and spread out. I think they're not getting enough light, so I think once I get that banana out of here, and also as I harvest these big guys, you know, it's gonna really open up the light. I don't wanna open it up a ton, because of course this wall, we wanna get shaded. But I think overall, that's gonna make the space better. I still have not figured out what to put in the middle of the arches, like in this space right here. So, that is yet to be figured out. I'm concerned that there's just a little bit too much, a bit too dark. So that's still up to come. The sweet potatoes, well, they're not happy right now, but we're gonna get back to them. And like I was saying, it's a time of giving and I've got three papaya plants. You remember these last time? They were shrimpy, wimpy little things and they are getting big and they cannot stay here. If you see the other one that I planted, oh my gosh, it is huge. So what's gonna happen is one of these is going in the front yard, one of these is going to my next door neighbor, and one is gonna go to another neighbor. So one's for Ray and Rosie, one's for Mr. Cliff, and one for us. So we'll have two papayas, and then each one of the neighbors will have a papaya. reason Ray and Rosie were really interested in the papaya is because of how big, well not only big, but like how thick this trunk is. I don't know if you guys can get a sense of it, but usually you don't see such young papayas with such thick trunks. Let me see if I can give you some perspective. Like here's my leg. Can you see my leg? That's how thick this thing is. It is huge. Usually they're a lot thinner than this and it's already producing Lots and lots of papayas. Another thing is, is that, yes, and there's gonna be another gift. Um, so besides giving a papaya to Ray and Rosie, I gotta take off one of these pups. Well, there's too many pups for one on this banana. So I just need to reduce them overall, but I'm gonna be harvesting one of these pups also to give Ray and Rosie. Um, they already have, well, they have a beautiful garden and yard, but they also wanna add some more edibles. So I told them I would give them a papaya and then I was gonna give them a banana. So I got that work to do. Well, I've already done it, I didn't video it, is that when I pruned these, these beautiful beauty, small berries, is that I took cuttings. And Mr. Cliff is not only getting papaya, but I also went and I gave him a cutting of the mulberry tree so he could have a mulberry. And I went and I put another mulberry in my backyard because we use so many berries that we've already gone through the 26 pounds by the time we got to like late summer. So. We just need to really increase our berry yield like a lot this year. So another mulberry for the backyard. And here is the cutting from the mulberry. You can see it's already sprouted. And you may be wondering, did I add like rooting chemicals or any of that kind of stuff? Nope, I literally cut a stick and I put it in the ground. And then I just added mulch so that we didn't accidentally mow it over. So between what's growing on the bananas, I'm just gonna count the big ones because I don't really know what's gonna happen with the dwarfs. I'm thinking I'm gonna get 50 more pounds from the one rack, 50 pounds from the other rack, let's just make easy math. So like 100 pounds of bananas. And then maybe 20 pounds, hopefully I can get 20 more pounds out of the mulberry trees. 
which would be 120 pounds before the end of the year, just from what's growing right now, which would mean we would be close to 200 pounds for this entire area, which would be amazing. Wouldn't that be amazing? And plus, I have had gifts for my neighbors. I mean, couldn't we not call that a win-win? Food for us, gifts for neighbors. I think this is a great thing. And if you're interested in making sure you keep up to date with all that's going on in this mini food forest and some of the other great projects that I do, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week on Friday and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. And while you wait, go ahead and check out this, this, and YouTube thinks you'll like this. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.